In this video, we will explore the effect of significant figures and how significant figures impact our calculations. So we're going to calculate the density of water. Now this is tap water. Okay, I'm not using deionized water. We're not going to get too obsessive about that. We're just going to use some tap water. And we can see how dense the tap water here in the city is. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our dish, put it on the analytical balance, always close all four sides. And now what we're going to do is tear. That tells the balance, okay, this is what zero looks like. And then we're going to take our dish over to the burette. Now we just talked about the burette in the previous video. The burette is a very accurate measurement for volume, right? So we're going to dispense 20.00 milliliters from the burette. All right, so this takes a second on the burette because the burette is tall and skinny. Remember that the burette is in units of 0.1. So for, for it to drain, we just have to watch the level as it slowly falls. And you can regulate the flow using your knob here. Right? Now when you're using a burette, one of the important things to remember is that you need to stop it when the line, when the meniscus reaches this line right here. Because otherwise you'll dispense this volume right here, which you have no idea what it is. So you're actually dispensing way more than you expect if you go all the way out. You want to stop the draining right there. Because remember, a burette goes from 50 up to zero, okay, and it works by subtraction. So when I'm dispensing, I want to watch my level. I've got about five more milliliters to go. As it comes down close to where I uh, think I'm going to need to stop it, I'll slow down the flow rate so that I don't accidentally overshoot it. Because that's the thing. If you accidentally wait too long, you're sunk, right? Because you've dispensed more than the volume you think you've dispensed. So once the volume gets down to where you see it's going to be the end point soon, you want to slow your flow so that you're ready to go when the meniscus hits that 50 mark. go three two one stop Oop, actually like one more drop there we go perfect the meniscus is right on the line okay now let's record the mass and open it Put it in, close the sash, there's our volume, 19.9864, 19.9864 grams. We never ever ever round a mass from a um, analytical balance. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this exact same dish again, okay, because we don't want to increase any sort of error. We want to make sure it's dry, so we dry it out really nicely. We ignore anything that this says, right, because we teared it when there was something on it. There's nothing on it currently, so that means we just ignore anything because obviously you can't have a negative mass. Okay, nice and dry. So that was trial one. Now, let's do trial two using the beaker. We used this exact same beaker a few minutes ago um, when we did sig figs and why do we do them? So I wanted, I'm trying to get 20 milliliters from this beaker. Well, there's 25 right there. That's the lowest volume on my beaker. So I just said, okay, a little less than 25. That's where 20 is. I have no idea if that's actually 20. That's my best guess. So let's see how that impacts my measurement. So I add that volume. Add all my drops in. Off to the balance we go. 26.0815. What was it? 0816. 26.0816. 26.0816 grams. Okay, well, what do we see here? 
my mass when I was using 20 milliliters from a burette versus 20 milliliters from a beaker, something's not right, right? Because 20 milliliters has a fixed mass. Let's see how that affects my density volume, my density calculation. So density is equal to mass over volume. So that would be 19.9864 grams over 20.00 milliliters. Now, when you do the arithmetic of sig figs, the calculation on your calculator is the exact same, right? You just round your final answer. So 19.9864, 9864, divided by 20.00. Okay, so there's my answer, 0 0.99932. Now I round my final answer to the least number of total significant figures. So my mass had four sig figs. My, excuse me, my volume had four sig figs. My mass has six sig figs. So my final answer gets rounded to four total sig figs. So that would be 0.9993. Oops. Zero point nine 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 three grams per milliliter. Okay, now let's do my calculation again. My mass is twenty six point zero eight one six grams. My volume is twenty mils. So again, I do my arithmetic the exact same way. So twenty six. 0 0.0816, oops, 26.0816. This time we're dividing by 20. 1.30408. Well, I've only got one sig fig here. D is equal to one gram per milliliter. Okay, so my final answer is as only a, is my final answer is a function of how many sig figs I had in my original calculation. Right? When you do this math, you get 1.30408. But all these decimal places go bye-bye in my final answer here. Why? Because this number has one significant figure. This number has six significant figures. You're only as accurate as your worst measurement. My volume measurement was clearly my worst measurement, right? This measurement stunk. This measurement was very accurate. But because this measurement stinks, my final answer is just as stinky as my worst measurement, okay? So that's why I've only got one gram per milliliter, no decimal places. Even though the calculator gives them to me, just because the calculator gives them to me, doesn't mean that I'm allowed to use them. Right? So these all exist as part of mathematics, but in terms of the answer that I report, I can't include them. Here, on the other hand, I had four significant figures as my worst measurement versus six in the mass. Four sig figs as my worst measurement here means I get four sig figs here. Now remember that zero doesn't count as a significant figure. So that's four significant figures. So if I asked you which measurement is the most accurate, this is a no brainer. Right? The measurement on the left is clearly much more accurate than the measurement on the right. In terms of based on the data I had available to me, right? these data gave me a measurement that only had one sig fig, whereas these data gave me a measurement with four significant figures. I hope this example helps you understand why we use significant figures and how those significant figures translate into our calculations.